Good very early morning. Good very early morning. Look, the sun is on us. Mm -hmm. It is a sunrise, which means it's at least 7.15. Call it 7.40. <laughs> and it's cold. It is can cold. Can see our breaths? Our coffee can see its breath. Mm. So we are in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We got here last night. Um, yesterday was a work day for us. And we had a great time. Not really. It was nothing exciting. Nothing exciting. No, not, not, yet. not yesterday. So okay. we're, we are here in Gettysburg. <laughs> the dogs are excited because they're going to get to go out and walk around with us. The great thing about Gettysburg is it is wide open, spread out. There's all kinds of things to see and do and hiking and all that. And so we're going to get into that today. We are not historians. You may have figured out I don't really know a lot about a lot. I know a little bit about a lot, but not a lot about a lot. Or I know a lot about a little. I don't know what I know. <laughs> I don't know very much about Gettysburg. So I'm not going to pretend to know anything about Gettysburg. Instead, we're going to direct you to some really awesome National Park Service uh, videos that we're going to be following along. Um, so when you plan your trip to Gettysburg, the actual monuments and sites and seas and all that stuff, uh, use their resources and maybe gauge from what we do. We're going to show you like our if we win and we're going to show you if we fail so you don't fail too. Um, and I apologize if this grosses you out. <laughs> our dogs are... They like to lick each other's Cleaning teeth. each other, yeah. <laughs> They're part cat. I don't know. And part orangutan, white orangutan. So, back to Gettysburg. We are going to be going and doing the auto tour. We're going to be doing it by ourselves. Like, they give you a map, but it's a little early to go to the visitor center. So, Google actually has all the stops listed, and you can just type it in and go from one to the next. And uh, we're going to be doing that. And one thing that we do want to say, depending on uh, your budget and where you're traveling from, there are lots of campgrounds around here. They're all like 60 to $75, which is clearly beyond our budget. So as you can guess, we stayed at good old Wally World. But we would recommend, based on where stop number one is, which is actually coming into town from where we were in, in Shippenburg, Shippensburg, is that if you are a Harvest Host member, go ahead and stay at the dairy, at Waydell's Dairy. And then make it an early morning and get up and drive in because your mm -hmm. first stop is actually going to be on uh, Highway 30 yep. on the way into town. Yep. So we're going to actually backtrack about 10 minutes, which means it's only about 20 minutes from Shippensburg to your first stop. Um, but we stayed at Wally World here in Gettysburg, and uh, we were not alone. And you may hear in the background old good old Generator George. We had about three of them. If you don't know who Generator George is, hopefully you are not Generator George. Just like Felicia, we know you're out there somewhere. Generator George, you are watching this. I'm sorry if I piss you off, but don't can run your generator all <laughs> good night. Okay? This is Walmart. If you need to run your generator, go to the $60 a night campground. I hate to be a jerk like that, but this is Walmart. This is not your personal campground. Did I say that rudely? Does that you sound did a little bit? I mean, I really want I want to get that across <clears throat> to people like we are borrowing space here at Walmart. They could kick us out if they want, and these guys are just running their generators like they own the place, taking up 17 parking spots. So, on that note, forgive me for my rudeness and abruptness. If you're one of those people who runs your generator at Walmart, really think about it. You're not supposed to, out of the courtesy for other people who are packed in like sardines here. I mean, I did, I slept fine. We had a street cleaner going mm -hmm. on. But <laughs> that's Walmart's business. They can yeah. have a street cleaner running. They could have it running all night long. They could park it next to us and just turn the little beepy thing on and beep it <laughs> because they own this friggin' parking lot. So we don't own it, so we need to treat it um, a little bit better than that out of respect for Walmart, but also, most importantly, our community, our, the, our RVers like us. I mean, we're not fancy pants RVers. If we're staying at a Walmart, we're all in this together. So mm -hmm. on that note, let's get out of Walmart. And uh, let's go to stop number one, which I believe is an eternal flame. Eternal flame? Yeah, which is what I have for you. <laughs> what? After I drank that dairy milk yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Your stomach didn't get upset I'm after. I'm pretty sure I've had an eternal flame. No. That happens if you eat Mexican food. Oh. Well, either way, I, are we getting Mexican? No. Mexican breakfast? No. Oh, that sounds delicious. No? No. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to stop number one. <laughs> we'll take you there.
When you're driving around town in the battlefields, you'll see those signs and that lets you know that you're at the different auto stops. Again, you can search on Google for them or they're on the national park map, or you can just fumble around like we usually do and see how you, uh, how you fare. Here's stop one. like feel it's just like eerie yeah that's what most people say when they like come a... here that's why everybody needs to come to Gettysburg at least once in their life mm. so stop number one is where the battle actually started and this tour takes you through kind of chronologically how things played out so this is where a bunch of Confederate soldiers actually ran into some dismounted cavalrymen and they opened fire and had an attack, a little battle. The Confederate troops held off until they could get support and reinforcement and end up driving the Confederates back, which staged um, the rest of the battle to come. And that was on July 1st at eight o'clock in the morning, which right now it is eight o'clock in the morning. So as Lindsay said, it's kind of eerie to be out here. We wanted to be here at first light of dawn. We're a little bit late, but it's really, there's something special about being here, um, one, without anybody around, and two, at this time, um, it's, just, it's just nice and quiet and beautiful. So the auto stop number two brings you to the eternal peace flame. I left out the word peace before flame. It's not the eternal flame, it's eternal peace flame. So this is stop four, it is Barlow's Knoll. And uh, this was where the day ended for day number one. And the Confederates had basically won, surrounded the Union, lots of lives lost, uh, like 15,000 lives between the two armies. So um, pretty sacred place here. And you can look out. Let's see why being up here is important. Do note that that parking spot was not here when the battle was taking place, so it was a little bit less unobstructed here. wrong about the last stop this is stop four that was stop three so this is where the confederate line was and the union was across the field in the town and so the confederates were holding up here formed their ranks and they did what was what came to be known as pickett's charge um, so that took place here
I know I said I wasn't going to do the history thing, but I'm reading the signs and then trying to remember it. So if you see my eyes like go off to the right or to the left, it's because I'm trying to remember what I just read. Stop number five is a, we're not getting out of the truck stop. It is the statue for the Virginia Memorial and General Robert E. Lee. arrive at this position. Now, within hearing of the fighting on Little Round Top, they were ordered, in place, rest. Look at that, I don't even have to tell you what happened anymore. I could just press a button and it plays. After two hours of heavy attack and counterattacks, there was... We're at stop number eight, which is the famous little round top. I'm gonna take the dogs out for a little hike up to the top. Stops 10 and 11 were beautiful, but uh, we didn't get out. It was the um, peach orchard. Peach orchard. And a barn. And a barn. Where a uh, big fight was at. Yeah, there were lots of fights out here. Um, and this was the end of day two. So we went back in time a little bit because we were just at day three somewhere. But anyway, we didn't get out here um, for stops 10 and 11. But we're going to go check out the top 12.
stop 15 is it. This is where, well, there's one more stop, but this is Pickett's Charge. This is where, across the way, <coughs> where we were earlier and some other stops, the Confederate Army was in the wood line, and on the third day of the battle, they came marching across. There was a wall here, lots of cannons, <coughs> lots of muskets, and the Union Army decimated the Confederates. So this battle right here was the high water mark for the Civil War for the Confederates. It was all down here hill for them at this point. Aww. Who's in puppies? <laughs> Who's in puppies? Okay. So the final stop on the auto tour is the final stop in the history of Gettysburg when it comes to the Civil War, and that is where President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address. So there's a parking lot you can park in, and then you walk up into the cemetery, and we'll go check it out. Boo. Everywhere we've been today has been dog friendly. It's all been outdoors. This is outdoors. It's a cemetery, but it's enclosed in the fence, and for good reason. Uh, I imagine people won't pick up their dog's poop, and that's incredibly disrespectful. Um, so, we're here at the cemetery. I am here at the cemetery. Lindsay's got the dogs outside. I'm gonna go check it out. This is the soldier's memorial inside the cemetery, and this is actually where Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. They've since memorialized it here. Most of those people who were buried here, most of the soldiers, well, almost all of them were Union soldiers, and um, they didn't know most of them. So there's a lot of unknowns, the ones that they knew they had them grouped by their different states. And then uh, Confederate soldiers, they just tossed into shallow graves and mass graves and uh, carried on with life. So, well, that was awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed Gettysburg. I'm glad we got out there early mm -hmm. in terms of the battlefield. We're still in Gettysburg. We're still going to go wander around. Downtown's pretty cute if we can find parking. I just said cute. It is cute. Downtown's it's, pretty it's interesting, pretty. pretty historic. Yeah. We're gonna go wander downtown if we can get there and find a parking spot and go check it out. But the battlefield, it was awesome to be out there first thing in the morning, eight o'clock. Yeah. Didn't see anybody. It's getting busy now. It is just before noon. So we kind of did our tour, what we showed you in about four hours. You can stretch it out as long as you want. There were memorial. There were... You could make it, you could go through faster. Yeah, you can go through faster, yeah. you can go through slower. But there's so many memorials, so many places you could stop and get out and walk and around. And it's beautiful. We may actually really go back is. and do some hiking. There were some trails across, particularly on the Confederate side of where the battlefield took place the first part of the morning. So we may go back and do those, uh, just go for a hike. Even um, Big Round Top, I think you can hike. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go maybe get something to eat. We heard there's some good, what are they called? Crab fries? Crab fries or cheese steaks? Cheese steaks, either way. I mean, we're not in Philadelphia, but we're not that far away that we can't find a good cheese steak. So maybe we'll go do that and uh, indulge ourselves just a little bit because we've been living on the cheap. And then we're going to take off today, one day in Gettysburg, another day somewhere else. Yep. So it goes with our story. So Sunday we can park for free until one o'clock in the streets of Gettysburg. And that's what we're doing. And now we're walking around, gonna go find some delicious eats. So 
So we don't normally eat out and we try our best to eat healthy, but uh, we met a local that told us that we have to eat at this place. They have phenomenal cheesesteaks and real french fries made from Idaho spuds. So we went to Hunt's Battlefield Fries. Mm. Hey, have you been eating those? I have. <laughs> I haven't eaten my cheesesteak yet though. I got a cheesesteak with Swiss cheese. I, Swiss usually doesn't bother me, but I took my enzymes and I took my dairy enzyme as well. And then Chris got a classic, classic with onions and American. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's yours. That looks interesting. <laughs> It's a Philly cheesesteak. Remember that eternal flame I was talking about? We'll see if it starts up here. I'm only gonna eat like half of this. Lindsay, they, they've got hair in there. You want it's me, cheese. You want me to eat that for you? No, it's mine. President Abraham Lincoln pissed on this tree November 19th, 1863. So we have to fill up in gas and it is more expensive in Pennsylvania than I thought it would be. Uh, the cheapest place I found is $2.59 a gallon, but it is cash only. And when is the last time that you've seen a pump like this? The next closest gas price is $2.89, 30 cents a gallon difference. So I'm gonna save some money pumping and paying with cash. So after wrapping up in Gettysburg today, we took our time getting just outside of Lancaster and we're settled down now at another Harvest Host farm. So we're gonna get into some really awesome uh, products that they have, some meat, uh, pork and beef products. And they've got a lot of um, farmland we're gonna go explore, go walk the dogs, get some exercise for them. Cause they've been cooped up for most of the day. So we are here calling it a day if you've enjoyed our little excursion of Gettysburg, please make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Like this video, send us a positive comment. We love positive comments. Send us a question if there's anything we can do to help you um, make your travels more adventurous, more awesome, more safe. Um, we enjoy being on the road and we enjoy sharing those experiences with you. So stay in touch with us and we look forward to sharing the next episode with you. Have a great day.